What's going on, everybody? It's Nitty, and I hope everybody had a good Easter. And we have Military Monday, Episode 5. And we've went through boot camp. We've went through the recruitment process. We've went through infantry school for the most part. I know there's stuff I forgot in there. And as I'm going through, I'm writing stuff that I it comes pops into my mind. And then we'll get a whole video on stuff that I missed. And now we're going to go talk about what it's... The life of a machine gunner. That's what I spent my eight years doing. That's what I've spent eight years learning to love and hate and everything else. And that's just that's what I know. I'm not too much into the mortarman, even though I've I've went on little treks with the mortarman. Obviously, they weren't. I wasn't allowed to fire or anything. Uh, they just thought it was a little bit too dangerous for me to play around with anything. So I wasn't able to do that. So we're pretty much just stuck with what I know about the machine gunners now. In infantry school, you're going to learn that you have pretty much four weapons that you're going to be dealing with. The M16, obviously, everybody has to know that. In the, in the Marine Corps, you're going to deal with that gun. You're going to know that better than your girlfriend and or wife, fiance, whatever have you. And everybody's going to have to deal with the M16. And as far as specialty weapons go, you got your uh, M240 Golf, which, you know, they're probably going to use that until they upgrade it from, I don't know how, it's a very, very re reliable weapon, so I'm not sure when, if ever, they're going to upgrade it. I'm sure at some point something devastating is going to come out and they're going to switch over. But you have the M240 Golf, you have the 50 cal machine gun, the Mark 80, which is an automatic grenade launcher, and then, of course, the M9. Now, the M9, the only person that's going to really be able to deal with that is your gunner. The gunner is going to carry one around because carrying a 240 Golf and an M16 just isn't uh, practical for the most part. So the gunner's going to have the M9. Everybody's going to be able to go to the range. Everybody's going to be able to qualify for it and get your little pistol badge and all that other good stuff. So you have two little pretty little badges on your chest compared to everybody else having one. And then for the most part, you know, the M9s deal with, you know, squad leaders, platoon leaders, so on and so forth. It's just the way the rank structure works. And those are the four weapons you're going to deal with, and I'm going to do a video on each one of them, try to play something out kind of like uh, Xbox Ahoy or something like that. I'm, I'm definitely not that good at editing and all that other good stuff, and I obviously don't have the voice that guy has, but we'll figure something out. So what you're going to do is when you first get uh, deployed to whatever unit you're going to be uh, with for X number of years, you're most likely going to go into the ammo man position. And while well, I should say... Uh, a machine gun team is broken up into three people. You got the ammo man, the gunner, and then the team leader. And the ammo man is what you're first going to come encounter with. That's going to be your job. That's almost a guarantee. It usually goes to the lowest man on the totem pole of love as far as the military rank structure goes. And it's the crappiest job there is. And here's why. See, what you got to do is you're going to be carrying around 90% of the ammo. You're going to have an ammo bag. And it's not necessarily, I don't even know why they call it the ammo bag, but uh, what the ammo bag consists of is it has your extra barrels in there, it has extra parts, it has cleaning kits for your uh, 240 Golf, it has uh, mitts that you can put on to change barrels out, because let me tell you, these things get steaming hot. I've seen kids uh, melt their whole palm of their hand off, not paying attention, just grabbing on the thing, uh, barrels that have been smoking hot after shooting a few thousand rounds out of them. Um, and what else does it have in it? I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I touched an ammo bag. But uh, that that's pretty much the gist of it. And then, like I said, you're going to be carrying around an absolute crap ton of ammo along with your with your packs and everything else. It's literally, it's the crappiest job possible. But it, it gives you a good lesson. And as soon as you get upgraded to gunner, team leader, you're going to be like looking back at the ammo man and being like, yeah, I know how that guy feels, but too damn bad. It's not me anymore. Now, once you get upgraded to the gunner, you're going to be carrying around the 240 Golf. You're most likely going to have a belt or two of ammo linked up and in there. You might have some extra ammo on you, but you got to be pretty mobile as a gunner. You're obviously going to be carrying the 240 Golf in your pack. The team leader is going to be consistent of, you know, you're going to carry your pack, an M16, and then you're going to have the tripod. And if you're really, really lucky, the unit you get deployed to has tripod carriers. Uh, mine didn't, so it was really annoying. You had to strap it to your pack. And if you couldn't strap it to your pack, you pretty much just had to carry it around. And it was flinging back and forth the tip of it. And it always smashed your fingers and thumbs. I mean, it's really all dependent on the unit you go to in, go into. Some of them uh, have gear coming out the butt. Some of them have nothing. Like I mean, some of them don't even have... Um, straps to go on your ammo bags and everything like that so you're using 550 cords and you're you know just breaking blood vessels on your neck and everything else so if you get put into a good unit with some good gear and they distribute the gear accordingly 
just you know look up at the sky and say thank you and, and move on from there. If you get stuck into a bad unit, welcome to the world of bad Marine Corps units and the government not um, giving us the proper gear that we need. That's just the way it is. And once you get that gear, you're going to be so happy you're going to hug it and try to go to sleep with it. And it's just the way, it's just the way it is. So what you're going to do first and foremost as a beginner machine gunner is you're probably going to be stuck into a team you're not going to know the guys for the most part you may get lucky and maybe go to a unit with a bunch of your other uh, marines that were in your infantry school some people aren't some people are they're going to get all split up but you're probably going to be put in a team with you know upper ranking uh you may have a corporal as a gunner, you may have a corporal as a team leader, lance corporal as a gunner, and then you may be a PFC depending on you know how you went in the boot camp, how you got promoted and all that other good stuff. But you're, like I said, you're going to be the ammo man. So you're going to learn the, the ropes. You're pretty much going to go through drill after drill after drill. You're going to do up downs. You're going to learn how to deploy... Uh, you know your your tripod and you're going to do a lot of this in infantry school but things change according to the unit so you're going to do drill after drill after drill after drill you're going to learn how to take apart the 240 golf and put it back together in less than 30 seconds you're going to learn how to clean it and all that other good stuff now i should go on i should talk about real quick you're probably wondering what well what about the the 50 cal and the mark 80 well the 50 cal and the mark 80 like i said in my infantry school unit they make you hump them around um, in infantry school, but it's really it's not practical whatsoever. If you get really lucky and you're put with a weapons platoon or a weapons company, I should say, that's when you're going to get and be able to deal with the 50 cal a lot more and the Mark 80 a lot more because those are typically put on the top of Humvees, just simply due to the obscure nature of them. Not to mention that the weight, because the weight with the 50 cal can be distributed uh, somewhat properly you know you got the big old base of it one person's going to be carrying the barrel one person's going to be carrying the tripod one person's going to be one poor sob is going to be carrying the rest of the weapon and it's heavy and it's awkward and if you get into an ambush type situation or something like that it's just not practical to put down on a bipod and get it up and running quick enough in order to counteract that ambush where you can just drop down and start firing rounds down range with the 240 golf so that's why they're mostly mounted on top of the the humvees same with the with the mark 80 the mark 80 is a one-piece machine it's 80 plus pounds and it's just not practical to carry around and it has to be put on a tripod or on a stand of some sorts and it's just not, you're not going to see somebody walking through the desert with one on their shoulder whipping it around like Conan the Barbarian or Rambo or something like that. It's just not going to happen. But you are going to get to play around with them in infantry school. After that, if you go, don't go to a weapons company, there's, it's most likely not going to happen. And usually, the way the Marine Corps works is they change weapon companies every so often. Like they'll designate uh, X unit as as part of the weapons company and then every four or five years they switch it over to a next company and everybody hopes it's them and it never is um i never got to be in a weapons company unfortunately and then you get to do a whole it's a whole different world you're doing different drills out of humvees you're doing different drills getting um the 50 cals mounted in time 240s mounted in time on top of the humvees and all that other stuff it's a completely different world and i wasn't involved in that unfortunately so i'm not really i was just able to watch these guys work and go through some of their drills and then they get to sit in their humvees and laugh at us when we're going through all our different types of drills so you're not going to be able to play with them all too much. It's one of those unfortunate things. After infantry school, I never shot another 50 cal, and I never shot a Mark 80. I was saddened by that, but it's just the way it is. My main my main objective was working with the 240 Golf and making sure I could get that thing up and running within a couple seconds and everything involved in that. So we'll get back to that. And what we're going to do, what I'm going to talk about is basically, like I said, we're going to do drill after drill after drill after drill. You're going to run 100 yards have your team leader pop down the tripod, learn how to get it on, learn how to slap it on, and put that pin through there. And you're going to lose your palm a bunch of times if you're the gunner. There's going to be marks all over your hands. Your hands are going to be so sore you can barely make a fist from putting that pin through there because, as we all know, you know the government overpays on a lot of stuff and, and things just don't fit right in the way they should. So if you get a good gun with a good tripod, you're in luck. If you don't, uh, be prepared to buy some gloves with some padding in them. And then the, the ammo man usually just drops the bag off and goes in off and run into the side. And that's where the, the good part of being the ammo man is, unless you like shooting and all that other good stuff. So the ammo man will run up behind him, drop the gun off or drop the bag off and some ammo, 
and then get off and, and cover the flanks of the 240 golf team, uh, the rat, your gunner and your and your uh, team leader. I'm getting all myself confused here. So the ammo man job sucks up until the point of when the machine gun gets deployed and we start firing. Then you go off, cover the flanks, and kind of just chill there for the most part if you're on a range. Obviously, if you're not on a range and you're in a real-life combat situation, uh, situation dictates, so you're not just going to be sitting there looking pretty. You're going to be firing round down, rounds down range as well. So after you get the ammo, man, you're going to be upgraded to a gunner at some point. You're going to be carrying around your M9. You're going to feel like a big bad cop, um, and you're going to have your 240 Golf. And the 240 Golf is really awkward. I spent most of my time as a gunner when I was in the Marine. Uh, when I was in the Marines, I spent a small portion of that as a team leader, and a very I got really lucky as as far as ammo man goes because as soon as I came in, like three months later, a guy came in below me. He got uh, pretty much downgraded to uh, Ammo Man and I got bumped up to the uh, gunner spot. So that, that worked out really well to, for me and I didn't really have to deal too much with the Ammo Man, but the small time that I did, it really, really sucked. And the gunner, you're going to be carrying around the 240 Golf. It's going to be awkward. You're going to be stuck on patrols all the time. You're not going to be in the back of the pack. You're not going to be in the front of the pack. You're going to be in the middle of the pack. And everywhere you go, you got that 240 Golf getting stuck on every single twig, branch, leaf, that possibly could happen in, in through the woods, and it's just you're going to have the worst time trying to uh, fangdangle your way through the woods and trying to be quiet at the same time. But when it comes to firing, that's when it's the most fun to a point. So your job is going to be to get that 240 up, locked and loaded, and firing downrange on target ASAP, and then the team gunner is going to dial you in. So when you go through your little uh, drills and you're running, what's going to happen is the team leader is going to take off in front of you. He's going to whip that tripod out over his head and slap it down on the ground. You're going to come rolling up behind him, dive down to the ground, slap that 240 golf into that, that bipod, push that pin through there, hopefully as easily as you can. Get that gun up opened. Team leader is going to throw some ammo in there. You're going to close it, lock and load it, get your shoulder pressure correct, and just start rocking and rolling. And then he's going to dial you in after you start uh, pump, pumping some rounds down range. Now, here's where being the gunner kind of sucks because it's really awkward firing position. Um, you're going to get down behind it, and you got to have proper shoulder pressure. They're going to go through this in infantry school until you don't want to hear it anymore. And you're going to be glad that you learn proper sh uh, shoulder pressure as time comes because what you're going to do is you're going to get down there and kind of pull it down into the la or down into the right or down into the left depending on which way you need to go if you're left-handed right-handed so on and so forth and you're going to have a lot of pressure build up you're going to have you know your hand on the stock and your cheek resting on your hand you're not going to really be looking down the sights too much after you fire the first couple weapons that's your team leader's job or uh, not fire the first couple weapons first couple rounds and then your team leader is going to do the rep pretty much the rest of the firing for you all you're going to be doing is maintaining that shoulder pressure and pulling the trigger when he tells you to pull the trigger so but the shoulder pressure is what kills you because you got in there, you're all locked down in there, and you're firing, and the team leader is going to be kind of laying on top of you on your side and to help you get that, that constant shoulder pressure. And once you start firing, I mean, if you're down there for a long time shooting thousands upon thousands of rounds and all this other good stuff that we get to do, um, I've had broken blood vessels that haven't gone away for a month. Uh, due to having the, the, the shoulder pressure that you, you needed to have to control the weapon. And in all honesty, it's all dependent on the tripod and how old and the weapon is and if it's falling apart or not because that's just another one of those things from you know the Marine Corps gets crapped on as far as newness of weapons. So it all depends on your weapon. You may find some that really don't need it too much. You're going to find some that need a ton of shoulder pressure to keep on target properly. And you are going to blow a lot of blood vessels in there. Um, another thing you're going to end up with is a lot of black eyes. You got that your hand rested on your on your stock and then your cheek rested on the stock and it's like giving you little yourself little baby punches a thousand times a minute a, a minute. And you know, you will come away with a black eye here and there, but eventually you get used to it and the black eyes will go away. I think I gave myself like five or six black eyes over the probably the six years that I was a gunner. So, you know, that's not too bad for the amount of rounds I've, I've had to deal with, but it is what it is. And, you know, like I said, I was in one of the only cold weather uh, units in the Marine Corps at the time. And the machine, the 240 Golf doesn't like to function properly in, in, in weather. So they got all this, you know... Uh, cold weather lube and all this other stuff that doesn't work and you're gonna just have you know gunpowder in your face uh 
lube in your face. You're going to be a disgusting mess as far as the gunner goes. You might want to buy some goggles or shades to go with that to kind of block everything off. And one thing I'm going to tell you right now, and you're going to learn this time and time again, but just put this in the back of your brain if you're going in as a machine gunner. If you do get a, a, a round that doesn't go off and you pop that, you have to pop that cover off and, you know, it's one of those things. That is a live round. You hit it with the firing pin and this bad boy didn't go off. So you're going to have to pop the cover open and you're going to have to take a look in that. And there has been times when I've watched kids, you know, they pop the cover off, they wait their, their five seconds to see if that round's going to blow or not. They pop their head up and that round goes off. And luckily, everybody that I've had that happen to or I've seen it happen to has had sunglasses on because very well, they could have lost their eyes. You know, they've had to get stitches in their face. Uh, uh, one kid had his nose broken by getting hit in the, in the tip of his, or not in the tip of his nose, but in the bridge of his nose by, you know, a piece of shrapnel. It will happen. So get yourself some sort of either safety shooting glasses or safety, you know, sunglasses, some sort. You want to protect your eyeball. You can't be a machine gunner with only one eyeball. It's just not going to work. Um, and go from there. Just keep that in the back of your head. It's, it's, it's a dangerous uh, position to be in when you have a, a live round go off and it just doesn't shoot. So, you know, you got pretty much a, a ticking time bomb in your hand and you got to get it out of there. And if you do get it out of there, throw it the hell away and make sure it's not facing anybody because there's been instances that they've told us about where people have pulled around out there. It didn't go out off. They threw it out, and all of a sudden that bad boy goes off and hits somebody in the leg, and it's not pretty. You know, it's the same thing as getting shot with an AK. Um, so it is what it is. You got to be extremely, extremely careful. Like I said too, when you're the gunner, uh, what you're going to be dealing with is you got to do barrel changes. Sometimes a team leader will do it. It all depends on how your team was put together and and how your unit functions. But for the most part, you have to. It's like a two-man process. So you're going to be flipping up and putting barrels on and off as you go. And the team leader may be doing that in order for you not to lose your shoulder pressure. But as we all know, if you put a different barrel on, the shoulder pressure might not it might not even matter because the barrel could be a little warped or something like that, and the bullets could be going someplace completely different, and you're going to get have to get redialed in anyways. Like I said, do not touch those barrels. They have a handle on it for a reason. I know people get overzealous. They get all excited and try to do things so fast. Do not touch those barrels. I've seen kids melt their palms off, literally skin dripping and boiling off on a, on a barrel that I set off to the side because the team leader reached up and snatched onto it or another team down the way, a gunner reached up and snatched onto that barrel and it just melts their hand and then they got to... Uh, literally baseball size blister growing on their hand and it's it's gross it doesn't look pretty whatsoever and I'm sure it doesn't feel pretty I wasn't dumb enough to go do it I was always you know the gentle type oh we're grabbing on that handle I don't give a crap how many times this guy behind me is yelling at me to get that barrel on there I'm not burning my hand off so that's another thing you're going to have to deal with is the changing of the barrels. They do have gloves, but you're going to find out for the most part those gloves are pretty much worthless if you even have them in your in your ammo bag um we didn't have them, so we had to learn how to deal without them. A lot of other companies had them, and they and I've talked to them about them, and they never use them. And you can see that they've been used because they have burn marks on them, but for the most part, nobody ever used them. You, you're not going to take the time to put your glove on and off, to take a barrel off, and then take it back off to start shooting the weapon again. So it's not really that practical. It's there for safety reasons, pretty much safety reasons only. And that's going to be your slight role as the, the, the gunner. Now you got the team leader. Team leader, you're going to be in control of what these guys do, where these guys go. You're going to be in charge of these guys. And just hope and pray that you get a bunch of guys that aren't completely brain dead. I've had some teams that the, my gunner and ammo man are completely brain dead, and they'll make your life a living hell. And I've had teams where the guys were really, really good. We meshed together, and it went a lot more, a lot smoother than anything that I've ever encountered in the Marine Corps. So it's all going to be dependent on your team. If you got somebody on your team that don't like the other two guys, you're pretty much screwed, so on and so forth. But everybody's got to learn how to work work together and get together, get together to make the team. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bad, bad four to eight years for you. Um, so the team leader is going to be the guy that kind of positions everybody, gets everybody together. You're going to be the guy that goes out there when you're doing your drills, and you're going to flip that uh, tr tripod up over your the top of your head, smash that thing down, roll off to the side. Your gunner's going to slap everything in. Ammo man's going to drop the bag in front of you. You're going to zip that bad boy open. By then, the gunner should have it in there, ready to rock, lids 
uh, popped open. You're going to feed the rounds in, close it. He's going to lock and load it. You're going to lay on him, and he's going to start firing rounds. You're going to be the guy that needs to have decent eyesight. you got to watch where these rounds are going. Every third round's a tracer, so you're going to know where they're going. So you're going to see the tracers hit, or you may see a pile of dust, and you're going to dial him in. If he's got to go up three clicks, right two clicks, left two clicks, down three clicks, you're going to be that guy that gets these guys dialed in and tells them when to fire. So he's going to go up. You're going to tell him, okay, you're off target, up two clicks, left one click he's going to do it he's going to fire another burst and then you're going to tell him to get in there and what we did or what I did as a t uh, team leader is when I told when I talked to my gunners they didn't fire unless I tapped them on the head on the on the Kevlar so what we had a process in is going is I tap him on the Kevlar if he didn't hear anything from me I tap him on the Kevlar again and we keep doing that process until I could see the rounds and see where we're going sometimes we're way off other times we're not and it, the team leaders is what I enjoyed the most. I like being, you know, in charge of people, uh, feeling that need to take care of people and getting up there and get it done and getting it done properly. And you're going to feel the most overwhelming uh, sense of gratification when something goes right and the, and the most overwhelming sense of uh, failure when something goes wrong. It's just uh, the way it is, and I really enjoyed being the team leader. And I wish I would have got more time to do it, but after my two years as team leader, I decided to cut the ropes with the Marine Corps and be done with it. And that's pretty much the gist of being a machine gun. I'm going to get into a lot more depth of it as we go through the weapons. You know, I'm going to go through the M9, I'm going to go through the M16, the, the 50 cal, the Mark Mark 80, so on and so forth, and tell you what I know what I know about them. And then we're just going to keep going on what I could teach you guys as a machine gun, or what I've went through in uh, the desert, what I've went through with them in the uh, you know the Alaskan wilderness, freezing my butt off. Uh, sometimes in the Canadian wilderness and all that other good stuff. So. That's pretty much the overall gist of what it is to be a machine gunner. It's tough. Um, a lot of guys, you know, some of the other platoons, and you get a lot of respect from being a machine gunner, a lot of respect from being a mortarman and a heavy weapons company platoon or heavy weapons company. And, you know, that's it's just one of those things that come, a lot of guys and a lot of lives are really dependent on the machine gun squad, really dependent on the mortarman squad. So, the, you know, the weapons companies are and the weapons platoons are the guys everybody looks forward to because you got to get there and you got to be in, in a position and you got to be firing, covering fire down in, in, you know, a short amount of time to save these guys so they can move up. It's a well oiled machine and you guys are the backbone of it. And that's what it is to be the gist of being a machine gunner. Like I said, I'll get into more of this. We're running on 22 minutes already. So I'm going to uh, play some Battlefield tonight and get some Battlefield up and over this gameplay, I think, or this this little com here. If you guys got any questions that you think I might have missed with the machine gunner or, or if you guys are popping in here from the military and you guys are Mortimin, uh, 0331s, 0351s, uh, saw gunners and all that, uh, small gunners and all that other good stuff, Feel free, chime in, get your input in there. It's always good to see uh, people coming together and asking questions and answering questions. So as always, guys, that's what I got for you guys today. Keep your heads up. Have a great day. Peace. What's going on, everybody? It's a Nitty, and I just want to let you guys know you can hit up my Tales of Grace's F playthrough over on Tour de Force or on a playthrough over on my channel. Also, if you missed my last Military Monday, we talked a little bit about infantry school and what you guys can look for there. I got a little link up there for you guys as well. So if you liked what you see, hit that subscribe button. Go over and check me out on Justin TV, Facebook, and Twitter. And as always, go over and check out VidThrough and Viso Gamers pages for a lot more videos from a lot more directors. I hope to see you guys there soon. So keep your heads up. Have a great day. Peace.